am so feeling good today. You know, that old vertigo thing is not playing a big part of my day today, so I'm feeling pretty darn feisty. And that means the beehive is going to be humming. The queen bee is working today. So I have lots to share with you. And um, first of all, we are on countdown to the quilt show and I have absolutely no business doing anything but wrapping up the quilts for the quilt show. But, you know, that, um, that lab puppy that lives in my head, or as my friend Sandy says, that crow that sees something shiny over there. Um, that's where I'm at today, and I can tell uh, I, I don't fight it. When I feel like the, the quilting craziness is in my brain, I don't even try to fight it. I just go with the flow. You know, I'm just one of those kind of people that waits till the last minute for pretty much everything. So, this is what we're doing today. Well, who knows what we're doing, but we're having a little bit of mail day. And um, I, let's see, I feel a little scattered right now. Oh, <laughs> I received a lovely card from my friend Jenny who has been traveling along with me on my blog way back in the day. Um, and she sent this cute card. And I tell you, she uh, I love it when I see her name on my blog. Um, and every Valentine's Day when I hang my uh, kitchen towel that she sent me, I, I am grateful for that friendship. And then... Izzy, oh, oh, Izzy, oh, I love this card too, look at that, but wait till you see the inside, oh my gosh, look at that, can you see it, it's like a magnetic, it's a needle minder uh, trailer with pins, I'm just like, oh, I'm going to use that for stitching today, oh, Thank you, thank you so much. Things make me smile. These things make me just so smile. And then I, you know, Leanne, who has her own Etsy shop that um, I, I absolutely love, Harvest Moon, um, and she makes these project bags, and I would love to make these project bags, and I actually think I might be able to make a project bag, and this might be a good way to start easing my way into zippers, but I, I don't have time to do everything I think I can do, so I love going to her Etsy shop, and I bought myself uh, a new project bag. She is so talented with whipping these out, and it helps me... Uh, feel organized and it makes my projects look pretty even in their unfinished state. So new cross stitch going in here or embroidery or <laughs> wool stitching, <laughs> whatever. So I really enjoyed that. Oh and I love this little string. You see this one I'm talking about. That lab puppy is living, living in my brain. Ooh, look at something over there. Look at something over there. So then I um, had a crazy moment. I admit it, I had a crazy, crazy moment. I have no business doing um, any more block of the months. But I absolutely loved this last year's block of the month that Lisa Bongian of Primitive Gatherings did. I thought it was uh, absolutely stunningly beautiful. And two of my friends are actually doing it in the, the colorway. And if you remember, uh, if you go on Primitive Gatherings and you remember seeing it, it's that one that was m mostly like creams and, and tans on a blue background. It was like 
so stunningly beautiful. The only issue I had, and the reason I didn't sign up for it, even though I really, really, really wanted to, was the size of it. I could not do a 90 by 90 quilt. I just couldn't do it. And then I saw that she was doing uh, one along a similar colorway for her summer block of the week. Summer block of the week. But that's smaller. Now, for those of you have, who have not been with me for, uh, for the duration or the previous uh, uh, you know, the Wooly Blog has been going on forever on uh, woollymammoth.blogspot.com. Um, back in the day when I was heavy into a block of the months and block of the weeks with Lisa from Primitive Gatherings, I had it in my mind that if I didn't pick up the blocks from my mailbox, I wasn't behind. I thought it was genius. I just thought it was genius. The problem was is that it was a community mailbox and the mailman was getting PO'd at me because I was not picking up my mail. And so I would sometimes open my mailbox from the backside and it looked like he took his foot and just jammed my mail in the box to fit it in there. So that only worked for a few weeks. Hmm. So for whatever reason, well I know, it's because it's beautiful. And so I signed up for um, Lisa's Summer Block of the Week in that kind of tan uh, cream colorway. I am like, I'm excited about it. Because I really liked that Block of the Month. It just was too big for me. And, I, and then I, like I needed Baldoni thread, but I thought, I'm not going to futz with it. I'm going to get the thread kit that goes with that block of the week. And so it's like little, it's like sweet quilting donuts, stitching donuts. Oh, yes. So I'm all set to go on that. I'm going to be prepping that thing. And then I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this. This is the laundry basket edit to sitar's um latest design and i i loved it it's uh it's going to be a challenge for me because i'm not this is like my friend dale's type of quilt with all these little pieces and everything so tannenbaum i loved it so i um i'm going to do a so long uh I believe I'll be starting in September. I have to see what the schedule looks like because I cannot even think past quilt show. But uh, get ready if you want to do it with me. I'm going to be doing it on the Wooly blog and then posting on this uh, video for um, my progress. So if I sound a little manic, that's what's happening today. I am in that zone. I did finish my sweet little cross stitch just in time for July, so I'm going to be um, framing that. Oh, hold on a second. Remember how my friend Linda, who came over, taught us how to finish our cross stitch like this? That's what I'm going to do with this one. The only difference was I went to a craft store and I found this. It's already got a little stand there. It was five bucks. And this little cross stitch, I'm going to mount on the front of this so it covers the writing, but I'm gonna have that little bit of red, white, and blue on this wooden frame. Isn't that a great idea? I'll show, I'll, I'll show it on Instagram or the Wooly Blog if, I, if it actually is successful. <laughs> but that's the plan. So I'm going to do that today, and then I, I showed on Instagram that I had bought this fabric. I was at the stitching post when it came in, and I had to get it. This is what you do with your receipt. 
you rip them up so they can't be used against you. And then you throw them in the garbage. So this great camping fabric is absolutely awesome. I just loved it. And it's in a colorway that is not my normal colorway, if that's a word. Yeah, that's a word. Uh, and then this to go along with it. So what am I going to make with this? My absolutely go-to placemat pattern by Valerie Wells. So this is a little card. And these cards are so cheap. I mean, I think I think they're around. Well, this one, this one was like three bucks or something. I'm not sure what they are now because I've had this for. Gosh, when was this? When did she do this? Is there a copyright? 2010. I've had this almost 10 years. You know, so um, it is my go-to uh, placemat. And I love using placemats. It makes me happy to see my fabric being used. And I love this placemat card by Valerie. And you can uh, order this from the Stitch and Post, either calling them or online. And it, it's, it's absolutely the perfect. And it's so perfect that what I do is I have uh, taken... A photo on my phone of the inside and I keep it on my phone because when I'm traveling I I can't remember like how much do I need how much do I want and I have all the dimensions on my phone for this because I know I'm gonna go home and make it so I'm making these today I will not be giving you all the uh, the sizing and dimensions naturally because then she won't sell her cards which she needs to do but I will show how I um, put it together, how much fun and how easy it is. So today, we're going to be making placemats. Like I need to be making placemats today. I need to be putting labels on my quilts. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. It's done! Isn't that adorable? Now for a tutorial on this, uh, you really have to go to a professional and that is Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher on Instagram and she has a, a blog, the twistedstitcher.blogspot.com in which she does excellent tutorials on this and it is where my friend Linda learned how to do it and passed on the joy. So I am passing it on to you that you need to check her out if you're a cross stitcher and want to finish something like this. I feel quite clever because I bought this already pre-made uh, little easel that had some 4th of July saying on it for $4.99 <laughs> and I used it as my back 
for the cross stitch. And so now I am all ready with my little cross stitch and I added a little bit of baking twine on a bow in the corner. And now I'm ready to go put it up downstairs. <laughs> so on to the next, next thing going on in this crazy place. <laughs> different hair, different shirt. I got distracted yesterday and went on a nice long walk. Um, a friend and I walked over to Fika Coffee so I could pick up a gift card for my auction basket. So I thought I'd keep you up to date on this auction basket because I'm going to be turning all my stuff in pretty soon. And I wanted to show you what I put into it. And then I'll show you what I got done yesterday. So um, I've included this little curls, wool curls. Aren't they cute? And then sew band-aids because every quilter needs cute band-aids. I've included this wool kit by Primitive Gatherings, Friendship Rose, and all of the luscious wool. Then there's my salvage pin cushion. Yes, isn't it cute? I kind of want to keep this, but no, it's for a greater good. The latest book, this is by Kathy Cardiff, A Cottage Garden. Isn't it wonderful? It, she, I love her wool stuff. And you know, you know me, I, I'm all about the wool. I do lots of stuff. I, I'm not, I'm not a purist by any means. <laughs> I am definitely a smorgasbord quilter. When you look around this room, you can tell, hey, there's a, there's kind of a crazy thing going on here. But wool is my first love. So I, this book is so fabulous and I know someone will very much enjoy it. And then my friends that distracted me yesterday, or rather, I have to say it's my fault. I distracted her because I wanted to go to Fika to get a gift card to include in my auction basket in this cute little wallet patterned by Valerie Wells. But, um, and then there's a gift card to Fika. So that will be in my auction basket. So I called her up and I said, I need to go to Fika, let's walk. And she is a knitter. And so she knitted two of these um, washcloths for my basket. And I'm here to tell you, we love these. Gee, <laughs> this is all he wants to use when he's doing the cleaning up in the kitchen and in the camper. So um, I'm including these. And they're so, she is such an incredible knitter. So there'll be two of those in my basket. And then I've got my Sheep Thrills, Sheep Thrills pillowcases. Two of them, a set of two. They are so cute. And a kit by Stacy West from Buttermilk Basin. Uh, this one, you could actually get this done. If you win the basket, you could get this done before Halloween. And it has the thread and the wool in it. I just love that purple wool. Spooky night. Spooky night. And then I think the coup de gras for the basket is I'm going to offer for whoever gets that basket a four hour wool prepping tutorial in the beehive. Yes, if you get the basket and you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, I will give you a one on one wool prepping tutorial class right here in the beehive for four hours at a future scheduled date. So that I'm hoping to meet someone or have someone up here that normally isn't doesn't come here. So that would be great. Or maybe it's someone that I know. <laughs> so I, that's that's what I've put together. I think I might I think I might add a little chocolate 
because you know chocolate is the me medicine for quilters yes not to rub on yourself but to eat yes so yesterday I um, finished stitching my mat from a friend Diane who gave it to me gosh I think it was last quilt show was it last quilt show or the quilt show before she came to visit sisters and I got this it's a fun club pattern and it's called uh, living the camping life or something like that but if you go on funclub.com you'll find it isn't it adorable well I finally finished stitching it and I found the perfect fabric for the back look at that now this fabric is might as well start giving this information out for people who want this um, let's see uh, Cynthia, uh, Cynthia Fisher, Quilting Treasures. I think this is the perfect back for this. <laughs> so then once I put this on the back, then I'm going to buttonhole stitch black around the whole edge. And it'll be done and ready for the camper. And while I was getting that fabric, I found this. Um, this is all at the stitch and post. Um, no, wait a second. I did buy this at the stitch and post. Shh, don't tell anybody. But I was in Primeville at the quilt shop there. Oh, and it is so cute. This is a Thomas Kincaid um, for Benertex, and it just has words all over it. I love words. I love words on fabric. So I had to get a half a yard of that. So yes, yeah, so if you come for the uh, quilt show in Sisters, definitely the quilt shop in Prineville, Oregon, which is about, from Sisters, it's about 45 minutes away, is well worth the trip. And she is absolutely the friendliest person I have ever met uh, in a quilt shop. She just treats everybody like they're her cousin. A cousin that she likes. So yeah. Oh, I just love the way that's going to look on the back. <laughs> okay. My next, uh, on to making the placemats. I haven't forgotten about the placemats, but I wanted to show you the next block that I'm wool prepping is my buttermilk basin. This is the center block. Oh, that's so pretty. Center block, and this is the autumn harvest block of the month. So I am going to prep that next. And then all I have left is the uh, little sashing prepping. And I will, oh, and then I'll piece the four corner blocks and I'll be ready to put that sucker together. Yay! So now we are on to placemats. Yes, on to placemats. Stay tuned. I don't know if I told you about this ruler that my uh, girlfriend Robin gave me, Omni Edge. It is like 33 no 36 inches long it's a yard and it has this little hook that hooks on the edge of your cutting table so it doesn't slide so much so for those long cuts it's kind of fun and um, she especially loves it with her pillowcases but as I'm cutting these uh, placemat this placemat fabric out I am noticing that there's awful cute salvage so I am making it about an inch bigger than the edge of the salvage so that I can have a little bit of color. I need a new blade. Yeah, when you have to run your rotary cutter back and forth, <laughs> it's screaming, new blade. Okay. 
See? Look at that salvage, how cute that is. Those are little tents. These are little camping tents. <laughs> Definitely going in. Okay. the back of my placemats. Oh, and the edge. It's so cute. I bought extra of this because I thought this would be cute napkins also to go with my um, placemats. So I bought extra to be able to make some should change my blade but I just don't want to stop and this is not a tutorial um, otherwise I would be giving you the dimensions and everything but really uh, this wasn't designed by me this is just a pattern I love and uh, you know it's just it's a cheap well I shouldn't say cheap it's affordable it's an affordable little card and um, that uh, Valerie Wells uh, designs sewing cards for placemats and napkins. And, um, you know, I'm not going to uh, <laughs> make her learn, earn less because she's raising a family and everything. So what this is, is mainly just to show you how easy this, this is for gifts and... And uh, I think this card is one, I mean, I've been carrying it around forever. And as I told you, I, um, <laughs> I took a picture of both sides of the inside. So when I'm traveling, I can, if I see fabric that I know that I want to make placemats out of, because it makes great gifts. Can you imagine a, a wedding gift with all homemade placemats and napkins? Um, of some theme and you know there's a fabric out there for every theme for a bride and groom or or a um, housewarming um, I've made them for pe friends who have gotten a trailer and and for their trailer and it's just so fun to be able to do that for someone and it's not expensive so I have a lot left for napkins.
It's kind of funny how we don't change our blades very often enough or the needles in our sewing machines. It's like we want to make sure they get down to where they're like a, a, a railroad tie nail. Like when you think about the, the cost of fabric and then the cost of a needle or a blade. Yeah, definitely going to do it. Before the next video, I'll have a brand new blade. Okay, now I have all my pieces cut and ready to sew. mats and they are adorable. Now I just have to sew the back to the front and turn it out like a envelope. I pinned the placemat right sides together with the back and the front and now I'm going to stitch all the way around leaving about a three inch opening at the bottom so I can turn it inside out. We're on the home stretch. And I usually back stitch where I'm leaving that opening. So here it is, all finished. And um, I mean, it takes maybe an hour and a half total to make a set of four. And uh, so the last step was to sew it right sides together, quarter inch, and then um, I turned it inside out. I left a three inch opening at the bottom. I turned it inside out, clipped the four corners before I turned it inside out. And then what I do is I do a, a quarter inch seam on the inside with my sewing machine and an eighth inch stitch around the outside edge. That way I don't even have to whip stitch that um, um, where I left the three inch opening. And so um, it's what a cute gift this is. And I know you guys, I know you guys have lots of fabric. Can you imagine place, because uh, see I use placemats out on picnic tables and and they're just great gifts. Uh, Halloween picnic <laughs> placemats, Christmas placemats. I have a New Year's uh, uh, Eve celebration placemats. So they're just fun and a fun way to use your novelty fabric. And just an awesome gift. Can you imagine in a basket with, uh, as a gift with uh, wine and uh, cheese or uh, a wedding gift? I just think it's so fabulous. And, and it's this um, placemat and napkin card uh, at the Stitch and Post, and it's uh, designed by Valerie Wells Designs. So um, that's it. That's it for this video. Thanks for hanging in with me today. I am. Um, going to have a, a wonderful day today. I'm uh, about to hit the road to go pick up my grandson who's coming down to Central Oregon to play with his other cousins. So fun. And then we'll see you in the next video. And thanks. Thanks so much for all the comments and the likes. Um, we surely appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies. Mm -hmm.